Hi, I'm Erin Ferimsky, and I'm here at the Get Centered Clay Studio in La Mesa, California. Um, we are here at this studio as part of the Porcelain 2 Conference to shoot some videos for Ceramic Arts Daily. I'm going to focus on some surface techniques, and a number of them use paper and a transfer of image from the paper onto your clay work. So, to get started, I am going to show a technique that is my version of underglaze transfer sheets that are often used in industry. These are from China and these have cobalt printed imagery. You wet them and put it on leather hard clay and you peel it away. So, when you purchase them, you're limited to the images that are provided. If you want to draw your own, um, or right now I'm not going to do my own drawing, I'm using a piece of clip art, which works great. You need a tile from pre-glazed tile. I use hardware bathroom tiles. These are about 10 cents a shot. Uh, you want to paint a layer of mason stain and a little bit of Gersley borate, about 50-50. So you want it fairly watered down. I've run into the case if I get the coat too thick, I have trouble getting the image to release from the tile. So just a nice coat across. The reason why I have suggested that you use Gersley borate or some other flux is because after the image is bisqued, it's very easy to accidentally rub it and it will smudge the image. So you just want enough so it kind of fluxes into the bisque tile. So you want to take this tile and let it dry completely. Now that I have a dry tile, I'm going to take my image and like I said, you can draw your own, but I'm placing this on the tile carefully. I think it's good to experiment with different ki kinds of writing utensils, a needle tool, stylus, pen, pencil. So I have this ballpoint pen. I'm carefully holding the paper down because if I am aggressive with my fingers, I'm going to get fingerprints. Could be something you play with, but right now, I do not want to. So. I'm going to not rest my hand very much on here and I'm just going to begin redrawing and tracing where the black is on this bird. This technique is great because you get this amazing detail that otherwise is very difficult to get with carving or painting techniques. Wherever I put pressure, it's going to pick up the, the ceramic pigment underneath. It's pretty much like doing a, um, a rubbing, a pencil rubbing, or graphite rubbing. Whatever kind of mark is made is going to be picked up underneath. So you can pl play with your line direction. Your writing tool. I mean, I could sit here and have something wider. What I don't suggest using is some sort of a, a marker um, if you want a sharp line. You want to use something that has a harder tip. So now I have finished putting the pressure on the drawing where I need it. You're going to see as I carefully lift it up that hopefully it has all been transferred. And this is super simple. All you need is a little bit of mason stain and a tile from a 
I, th I think one that is made in industry works a little better because it's no imperfections. It's flat, it's smooth, it's that surface you want. Or, you know, use a plate. You could use a thrift store plate. Uh, I suggest cutting it out. Um, and then if you do have some little marks that you don't want, you can see right there where my hand rested, I can cut that out. Some people can can leave those there and it can be a really nice touch if you have like this, this old printing technique to it. Then you want to take a slap and make sure it is soft leather hard. You need the moisture in this slab to just wick that um, medium right off the paper. Figure out your placement. I'm going to be working with something else on here too. Maybe I'll do it at an angle here. So now I'm going to just gently and gingerly lay that onto the slab and carefully begin to put pressure without smudging. Once you have it in a stationary position, I suggest just running the rib over it or something to help transfer the image and print it onto the clay. So there's a lot of techniques out there that are pretty technical um, or you might be intimidated by working with uh, some of the medium or have computer skills to do certain decals for transfer techniques, but this is super low tech and if you have a, a pencil, that's pr pretty much all you need. And let's hope this magic worked. All right, there we go. The image transferred just beautifully right onto the slab. I will say if you have problems, often I've found that it's because the slab didn't have enough moisture. So if you're if you're, work, if you're hand building and it's a complicated form and it's drawing out on you, it's hard to do this technique onto it then. Uh, I want to emphasize using multiple surface techniques to develop layers in your work. So now that I've done this, I'm just going to do a real simple uh, paper stencil on top of this. Um, slightly off kilter of this bird. And when I work with paper stencils, which I do quite a bit, I like a fair amount of moisture in my slab so it holds the stencil and grips the little edges. So if that doesn't happen, I just use a sponge and you can see how it's getting a tighter connection there. Now, of course, I want to be very careful sponging over this area, so I'm just going to pat with my finger. Just make sure you work out the paper to be totally flat. So now I'm going to be working with the paper stencils and some underglazes. I'm going to just lightly dab a sponge. You can use a brush, you can use a sponge, whatever you want. So, close. I actually like to take a sponge and then just dab it a little bit there. So, I'm going to work around the edges. And this is just a sponge that I like. I can, you can make this opaque and cover the whole thing. Or, I like working with this sponge because I play with the little squares that happen. So, not only do you have the image? You're going to have the crisp line from the paper stencil, but then you're also going to have this repetitive pattern and texture that's then built up around it. And that is when you start to have some layers happen in your work. So you got to be real careful. It's not gripping real well on top of that because I didn't want to wet it more.
I want it to be a little denser around the edges, so I'm going to go around. So now you want to get a needle tool or a sharp tool and slowly pick up. paper. Got a little wet so it's weak. So I'm gotta be careful. So. And there you go. On the last tile I was showing that the underglaze paper transfer to create layers can go on the bottom. I just want to also point out that it can go on the top. For this tile, the first technique I did was a paper stencil of red stripes. The white is the clay body. Peeled that away, had the red stripes, put this shape that I cut out down onto the leather hard clay, blotted it, uh, with some orange underglaze in a more translucent, fa translucent fashion so you can see the stripes underneath. Took that off and then once again on the leather hard clay I drew the shopping cart onto a tile, transferred it with paper and rubbed it. And there so you go. So you can either have the image underneath or on top. That is paper, stencils, and underglaze transfer.